In this video, we're taking a look at this Aurea Pro, a full featured digital audio workstation for your iPad. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, before you freak out and you look at all the different settings and dials and menus and things that we have here in Aurea Pro, don't worry, I'm going to take us through step by step. This video is our first look I've spent 30 minutes with Aurea Pro and I want to take you for a tour of what I've figured out so far. We're then going to spend the next week exploring Aurea Pro in a little bit of detail. We'll probably only just scratch the surface because as you can see, there is so much going on here. There's so much we can do in this application. So let's stop dilly-dallying and let's jump in and take a squiz. Now, because there is so much we're going to cover, even in this first introductory video, there are timestamps in the description. So if you want to jump to a section, please go ahead and do that. But here is what you'll be presented with when you first download and purchase Aurea Pro. A big thank you to the folks over at Aurea. They provided me this copy to check out and to show you here today. It does cost $49.95 US or your country's equivalent if you want to pick up the app. And then there are other in-app purchases as well that you can add to Aurea Pro. There's also a cut down version. There is Aurea, which is the regular version that's around $30 US. So check the app store at the time you're watching this for all the latest info. Let's kick off with a tour of the app just so that we can get familiar because I've just started using this and it's pretty intuitive. Again, a lot of these apps I've explored Cubasis in the last series and now we're in Aurea Pro. At first glance, you might think, oh, there's so much going on here, but don't worry, it does get easier after just a few minutes. So when you open up, you're here in Mixer View. Now you'll notice that in the top left corner, we have Mixer View. We then have our arrangement window here, which is more of your traditional waveform and MIDI file view. And then you can add in here your keyboard at the bottom. So if you're playing your MIDI tracks, you can play them right in there with the keyboard. So each of these has a bunch of different functions in here, which is what we're going to go through step-by-step step in this video. The other thing you'll notice is at the top here, you've got your pretty typical transport control. So you can see where you're at within your track, including your time and your bars. And then you've got your forward, back, your play, your pause, your record, so that you can add, access your transport controls. And they're present regardless of where you are here. You've also got some menu items. So what I've first noticed about Aurea Pro is it's a little more like a traditional desktop DAW. So a little bit more like Pro Tools or Reaper and some of the other digital audio workstations I've used on PC and Mac in that you have the ability to have all the buttons down here when you're actually editing, but you also have some additional more powerful options up here in the menus for the things that you're not going to use as often. So we'll have a bit of a look around at them. But for now, let's jump in and first take a look at the Mixer View because this is something that I'm super excited about here in Aurea Pro. Now, if you've never used a mixer like this before, it can look daunting. I remember when I first saw mixing desks in like music videos, I would think, how do they know what all those buttons do? But here's the thing. All of these are just tracks. So every track is replicated. Every one of these is exactly the same thing. So all you need to know is what one of these does. And then you know what all of them does, because all this is, is representing all the different tracks that we have here. And this just happens to be a project, the demo project that has a bunch of tracks in it. So so keep that in mind as we go through here. Let's just take you through each of these in the strip and then uh, we'll explain what each of these do. So from the top here, we've got our FX here. So if we tap on that one, we come into our MIDI control and our channel strip. So I'm not going to go through all the details of these in this one, but your MIDI control is all of your MIDI information about your ports and your velocity and your other information, your MIDI grid, your quantizing. So you can set all that up in there. And then your channel strip is more of the traditional kind of channel strip that you would have on a mixing desk. So we've got an expander, we've got an equalizer here, you've got your EQ and you've got your compressor. You can also then add in additional plugins that you can see down here. You can send things out to your auxiliaries. We'll talk about that in a moment. And you can control your fader, things like your uh, phase switch button here, and of course your mute and your solo as well. So that's everything there in the channel strip. There's a lot there to explore, which we'll be looking at in future videos in this series. If we continue down here, you've got your record button. Haven't quite worked out what this does, but it's for these MIDI tracks. I'm assuming it's something MIDI related because it's not on the audio tracks. 
We then got our automation, our read and write for automation. Again, we're going to have a look at those in future. Uh, and then we've got the instrument here. So if you're using a MIDI track, you can tap that one and jump in and use some of the preset instruments. We'll show you some of those later in this video as well. We've then got uh, down here the output of where these are actually going to. So these can go to different buses. And if we go to the end here, that's going to go into these buses. It's basically track groupings so that all your drums can go into one drums fader. You've got your bass, guitar lead vocals, your backing vocals, and your synth sounds. So you can use track grouping and auxiliary sends. Again, lots of power in here, lots of things that we can do. And again, it's, it's a very full-featured DAW here. We've then got the control here of our auxiliary sends. So you can see these are being sent out to auxiliary two. And if we come down to the end here, this is where these auxiliaries are set up. So you can see on auxiliary one, we've got stereo delay and we've got our classic reverb on aux two. So we can see here that some of these are being sent to aux one and some individual tracks are being sent to aux two, the ones that we want the reverb and the delay on. We've then got our panning knob here. Are you still with me? Don't worry, it's, it's, it gets easier. I've only spent 30 minutes and I'm already all over this, so stay with me here. We've got our panning knob, so you can pan that to the left and the right, which is pretty cool. Uh, double tap will bring you back to, to Unity there. And then, of course, our faders, and these are very nice faders. We've got lots of distance in here. We can go everywhere from down here at minus infinity up to a plus 10 on our faders, so we can move that around. And at the bottom, your mute solo. And then at the very bottom here, we can rename these tracks by double tapping on those and naming your tracks. Whew, that, is, that is a lot. So you can see here, when I'm comparing this, and because I took my first look at Cubasis, the way I'm kind of seeing this is that uh, GarageBand is your light. Um, Cubasis 3 is kind of your medium. This is your heavy. This has got a lot of stuff to it. But again, only 30 minutes in and I'm already finding that I'm enjoying the interface here. These are very easy to move around in here and it's very intuitive once you work out that you've got your mixer and then your arrangement window here, which is a good segue because let's check out the arrangement window now and take a look at that one. Now, I must admit that when I first opened Aurea Pro, this is what kind of freaked me out because this is a very zoomed out view, right? And I'm like, how can I How can I edit? How can I see what's going on here? But don't worry, you can actually zoom in. So everything here is completely zoomable. So we can zoom right on into our bars there so that we can see what's going on. And the other cool thing is you'll see we've got the ability to view all of our tracks like this, which is cool, but then we can drag up and take a look at that. The more we drag up, the more options we get over here to the left. So let's just zoom the tracks back out again, but zoom in on this one. So you can see here, over here on the left, we've got uh, the name of our track, our Mutant Solo, our Record, our FX, our Color that we can add in there, which is cool. We can change the color, of course. And then we've got uh, all of our, our automations, and I think that's for automations, Again, 30 minutes, folks. We need to figure this out. Uh, and this is, yeah, I don't know what that is. We'll, we'll get to that. Don't worry. So there's a lot of options in here that we can look at. You can see you've got your standard buttons across the top for your regular things you're going to do. So you're splitting, you're copying and pasting, you're cutting. Got multi-select in here, which is cool, so that we can select multiple items at the same time. That's always handy there. You can select all. You can lock tracks always handy. You can mute tracks. You can do all the things and even some cool cross-fading algorithms. You've also got a zoomer up the top there. So if you're using a mouse like I like to do, you can control your zooms a lot easier than having to reach for the screen all the time. That's very cool there. So much going on here, so many options here. But again, the, the cool thing about this is you have all of your, your normal sort of trans, your normal editing controls right up the top here. So if you want to split, copy, paste, you can do all that. But then you've got these menus as well. So we've got our uh, main menu here. We'll took, look at these in more details in a minute. And then you've got the edit menu here. So there's additional stuff in here. I'm assuming that we can do with the edit menu that we're going to play around with when we start editing some tracks. And then this is the cool one. We've got this process menu. So we can adjust gain. We can normalize. Normalize, we can reverse, silence, do pitch changes built right in. I know, pitch shifting built right in and a whole bunch of other things in here. So yeah, there's a lot going on here, a lot of features and a lot to learn. So I think the learning curve is going to be a little steeper. I mean, you've got all these options. It's going to take a little bit longer. But again, don't worry, we're going to settle in here. So watch the rest of this one and then make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be diving into Aurea Pro and I've got a cool project that I'm going to work on in the next week, which I'll tell you about in just a few minutes. Now, like most of our DAWs, we do, of course, have a piano roll editor for our MIDI. So you can see here, these are audio tracks, these drums, the kick and the snare, and this you can distinguish as MIDI because it has a little piano roll 
roll button there. So if we tap on one of these tracks, we can tap on that. And here we are in our piano roll. So down the side here, there's all of our notes. And once again, we can zoom in. Oop, we've added a note. So we've tapped on there to add a note. Our undo is up here and it's very easy. You've got multiple undos and redos, which is very cool, but you do have to be careful when you're sliding across <laughs> because you're gonna add notes. So you kind of need to tap and slide across outside of the area and the range. Uh, otherwise you're gonna add notes. You can see, see I'm leaving all this in because this is just what happens when you first start doing something, right? Uh, let's try to do that again. The other way you can do this is to just double tap and then you can come straight into here. So I'm assuming I've got a, a, a right on and I can move around without having to do that, but your standard sort of MIDI note editor where you can grab the MIDI notes, you can add them, remove them, change them around. We're gonna play with that in more detail in a future video, but yeah, full full functioned here, piano roll editor. The other thing you notice is yes, we do have a keyboard here, so we can play along, I'm assuming. Uh, not working as I play there, so it must, be, uh, must need to go into a different view. Let's just come back out here. <laughs> Use the X, Pete, use the X. Come back out here, uh, we'll go into the piano here and uh, still not doing a thing. Uh, hold the line while I just work out what I'm doing wrong and then we'll return and resume the video. Okay, I was all over this in testing, but I'm not getting it working, so that's okay. Again, we're gonna continue on with this because this is my genuine first look at this. I've literally been using it less than an hour, so we will come back and explore, but trust me, you can bring up the keyboard, you can actually play in sounds. I'm just not selecting an option that clearly I need to. And the other cool thing you have here is a drum pad. So similar to Cubase's 3, if you saw my video on that, we've got the ability to use either your keys or drum pads, whatever you would like there. So this is the uh, the track that it comes with, a project, a demo project. I won't play it in case it's copyright, but what I thought I would do is just bring in some tracks and have a little bit of a play with this. But before we do that, we're gonna just explore some of these menus because there's a heap of menu options here in Aurea Pro as well. So once again, at the top here, we've got our menu. We can do new project, we can load our projects. There's snapshots, which uh, I know that Jade Starr did a video about Aurea Pro. She mentioned snapshots. I've already forgotten what they're all about. We can save and rename. We can import files, add tracks, mix down our track. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff we can do here. The input and output output matrix, which uh, I've used in other DAWs, but I've never used on, an, on a mobile door, so that could be interesting to play around with. And something that I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time with is the user guide and probably the Aurea forum as I learn more about this over the next week. We've then got that edit menu that I, I talked about before with a bunch of different things that we can do in there, and then the processing. And what you'll see here is that on a MIDI track, we've got a bunch of different processing that we can do here compared to an audio track. So these are context-sensitive menus, which is pretty cool. So whatever you're doing in your track, the menus will actually change to be what it needs to be. If we come back here to an audio file, you can see that we've got different processing options for audio than what we have for our MIDI track. So that's kind of cool. Now I know there's there's a lot here and I've only just, I've, I'm at like 1%. If you saw a progress bar, Pete would be right down here at 1%, but that's okay because uh, yeah, if you're joining me and you're following along with me or you want to check out Aurea Pro, this is where you'll be and you'll be tapping around here and doing these same sort of things, I'm sure. All right, let's uh, jump in, create a new project and just have a little bit of a play and see what we can do for the very first time in Aurea Pro. So I'm assuming I'm gonna go menu and I'm gonna go new project and we should get, oh, here we go. We've got no template. We've got a name here for our project. So we'll name this, you know what it's gonna be, Pete is Noob, because that's our project naming convention for when I start up. And ah, that looks a little bit cleaner, doesn't it? We've got our project here, our window ready to go. Let's work out how we could add a new track. I think I saw it here under our uh, a menu option, uh, add track. That sounds like a good start, doesn't it? Number of tracks. So we can add multiple tracks here, MIDI, mono, or stereo audio. Let's just add a MIDI track to start with and we'll hit it there. There we go. Uh, it is ready to go. We've got that. Gives us our default piano. Most piano, most uh, most DAWs will do that. We can then zoom in and take a look at the window. That's our arrangement window. Here's our mixer. So you can see here, unlike what we had before, we've just got this one track, and then we've got all of these. So these are all of our uh, our sub mixes. So these are those track groupings I was talking about, and we can send the output of this uh, instead of going to the main master. These can go to a subgroup. So this is what's going to make this super duper powerful. So you've got all your drums. You set up a drum subgroup. You got 
out all your vocals, you set up a vocal subgroup, and then you can control effects, but also your panning and your fading and everything for all of those on just that one auxiliary send and that one group. So that makes life a lot, lot more fun when uh, you're trying to bring together larger and more uh, complex kind of projects. So that's all very cool. If we come back here to our editor here, uh, let's just work out. I'll have a quick play. I won't make you watch this, and then I'll see if I can work out how we can record in a sound here in Aurea Pro. Okay, I'm missing something super simple here because I can get my instrument here. Uh, when I look here, it's working there. I can add in the notes manually and I can even play them in, but for whatever reason, uh, I've got something not set up right to actually play here. All of you Aurea Pro users, you are yelling at your screens right now and you can let me know down in the comments. That's your job. What did Pete do wrong here? Why aren't I getting my sound through here? I don't quite know, but I'm sure it is something simple and I'm sure we'll work it out. But let's do a bit of a pivot then in this video because I do want to have a quick play around with the mixing. So what I'm going to do is see if we can work out how to import some tracks from one of my other projects in GarageBand and throw them here into Aurea Pro. Let's take a look. Now I have had a quick play around and I haven't quite worked out how to import a file from another location. So what I've done is I've copied my files across into the Aurea Pro folder. I am absolutely positive there's an easier way to do this, but I'm going to tap on import file here. Here is my files, this uh, WAV file imagination. I've got these four tracks and what I should be able to do, can I import all of them at once? There you go. We can, we can import multiple at once and we've got... Uh, Oh, destination track is this it's going to add a track okay cool so we're going to add the tracks in here we can see here the sample rate 44.1 24 bit length of 224 if we hit okay on this one it's going to import those four files there it goes one of four we'll uh, let this keep importing two of four i'll let this finish up and then we'll see how it goes all right here we go it has added in our wave files kind of zoomed in here are we so we need to uh there we go <laughs> we'll use this i like this zoom control in the top right it seems to work a little bit better so we can zoom all the way out and there you go we've brought in all these stereo tracks now the reason i brought these in as stereo is some have some stereo effects and some panning if we brought them in as mono that would be no problem as well that would just be that one single waveform and this is something i really like about this uh, this app is that unlike GarageBand, you can tell when you've got a stereo or a mono file so here we have our stereo file uh, we've got everything set up here now i have made sure the tempo here is 110 bpm to match what we already had in here why don't we hit play and take a listen to the backing track of my tune called imagination okay now what was wrong with that I had done zero mixing. So these are all at maximum mix volume. Did I do that on purpose? Not really, but that's okay. We can go to our mixer icon here. Yeah, see, these are all way, way up here. So what we need to do is bring these on down. And this will be a good test to see if we can get a, a quick and easy mix. So what I'll do is we'll go down to fader zero. We'll bring these in one by one. So we'll bring up the drums first, and then we'll mix the rest of these in and see how quick and easy it is for us to start using and getting familiar with the mixer here in Aurea Pro. Okay, that's coming together. So you can see there we can adjust the, the different mixes. Now, one thing you will notice is because these are exported from GarageBand, they've come in as pretty aggressive WAV files. So that's why they sounded so full on to begin with. And we needed to drop the volume of these quite significantly. Don't worry, that's that MIDI track that didn't work. Uh, we've had to drop the volume of these quite significantly. So now we can come in here and we can start playing around. We can, uh, we can change the inputs here. We can add effects. So we can use our channel strip here. Let's just play with the channel strip really quickly on this drum track shall we we'll just uh, we'll pop out of there uh, we'll solo and we'll solo this drum track because it's a pretty funky kind of drum you can see well, solo lights flashing up the top there to tell us that we have something soloed if we play this Cool. So what we can do is we can come into our effects and then while we're playing back, we can start playing around with this. So let's uh, start adjusting some EQ and some compression, shall we, on this drum track. Is that doing much? 
is it even on? <laughs> this is the question. Uh, let's see. Was that actually doing anything on there or do we need... Uh, is there a button that we need to actually put the channel strip on? As I mentioned, we are learning this as we go. So I'd probably need to come back and play around with that to work out exactly what I'm doing. And again, this is familiar for those that have used these sort of channel strip layouts before. For those like me who have been doing a lot of GarageBand lately, it's a little bit new again. But again, we can add in, we can add in different effects here. We can play around with that. Uh, and the different aux sends as well are all in there as well. There's a lot going on here. Oh, oh that solo light's annoying me. I'm going to turn off the solo. There you go. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot that we can do in here that we're going to explore in the future. But again, it's going to be overwhelming using different new software. But uh, over the next week, we're going to come back and explore this in more detail. So I will continue building out on this track. We'll be recording some vocals. We'll record some guitars. We'll get our head around the MIDI and the synth instrument stuff, and we'll make sure that everything can come together here in Aurea Pro. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you can join me for the next uh, five or six days while we explore this Aurea Pro here. Check out more links down in the description for more videos, and I'll see you on the next one.